the release of the book Water and Public Policy in India, Politics, Rights and Governance, authored by Dr. Deepthi Acharya, Senior Assistant Professor, Department of Political Science, the Maharaja Sayajiram University of Baroda. This is Aparna Vijayan from the Department of Political Science, MSU Baroda. Thank you all for joining. This event is organized jointly by the Atal Bihari Vajpayee Institute of Policy Research and International Studies, IPRIS, and Department of Political Science, the Maharaja Sayaji Rao University of Baroda, Badodna. May I welcome you all to this event and request the dignitaries of today's event to take their seats on the dais. Our chief guest of the day, Shri B. N. Nandavala, advisor to the Honorable Chief Minister of Gujarat, Government of Gujarat. Welcome, sir. Professor Adya B. Saxena, Dean, Faculty of Arts. Welcome, ma'am. Professor Amit Ulakya, Joint Director, Atal Bihari Vajpayee Institute of Policy Research and International Studies and Head Department of Political Science, MSU Baroda. Dr. E.P. Acharya, Senior Assistant Professor, Department of Political Science, MSU Baroda. Before we begin with this event, may I request all of you to rise up for the university song. University in the year 2015-16 and for 
former registrar, officer on special duty, the Maharaja Sajjaram University of Karuna. Sir. The chief guest for today's book launch function, distinguished civil servant, eminent expert on water issues and water policies in India, and advisor to the Honorable Chief Minister of Gujarat, Sri P. N. Nabalagala Ji. Dean, Faculty of Arts and always a well-wisher of the Department of Political Science, Professor Adya Saxena, Dr. Dikti Acharya, my colleague and friend and whose book is going to be launched and discussed today for the first time in the country and in our city. Dean, Faculty of Journalism and Communication, Dr. Professor Niti Chopra, Dr. Vijay Rai Shah, family members of Dr. Acharya, faculty members of arts and other faculties of the university, Dear colleagues, student friends, friends from media, welcome Professor Magandai Parma, syndicate member and Dean of the Faculty of Management Studies and uh, all other ladies and gentlemen present today. I am indeed delighted to welcome you all to this function which is organized for Felicitating Dr. Dikti Acharya's achievement of publishing a book which has already received international recognition in the form of London and New York. Publishing it for the first time prior to its getting published in India. And uh, we are indeed delighted, privileged to have Sri B. N. Navalavala Ji with us. Just one email and one call, call to his office and he was so kind to accept our invitation. We had thought of him only for this occasion because we couldn't have identified a better person than Sri Navalavala Ji for discussing the book on water policies in India. He has had a very long distinguished career in civil services. He has worked with five prime ministers, if I may say so, four, including the present prime minister, Sri Narendra Bhai Modi. And his work, his advice on water management projects in India is ultimate. He carries that authority of knowledge whereby all projects relating to irrigation, other water resource management projects in India, they carry this stamp of his knowledge, his advice and indeed we are very lucky that in Gujarat, he has been functioning as the advisor to Honorable Chief Ministers since the time of Sri Narendra Bhai Modi holding the post of Chief Minister of Gujarat. So we are indeed very lucky that Gujarat's water resource management policies and strategies are in very safe hands in the form of Sri Navalagala's advisory role. So sir, we are very thankful to you for agreeing to come over and deliver the keynote address today on this very important theme. 
I also take this opportunity to congratulate Dr. Dipti Acharya, my colleague, for this worthy achievement. For a teacher, for a professor, there is nothing better than to see one's book in print. It's indeed a process of creation. Even if it is not a literary book, I put it in the category of creation because a lot of labor, a lot of creativity, a lot of intelligence, a lot of self-criticism, a lot of self-doubt, anxiety, hesitation, so much goes into the writing of a good book and it takes months and years really at times to put together a good scholarly work and get it published and that too by an internationally renowned publisher which has stringent standards you see, of editing and review. So we are very happy that Dr. Dipti Acharya's book on water policies in India is out this month itself in the month of September and we are having this first function for the release of this book in the public domain. Water issues in India have now acquired interdisciplinary dimensions. Earlier it was thought that it is an engineering issue. Water resource management in India was seen to be largely an engineering issue. How to optimize the water resources for irrigation and for drinking uh, water purposes. But subsequently, as we know, so many other branches of knowledge and very rightly so, got involved with the research on water studies and water policies. The economists talked about regulating demand and supply with respect to water in India. The environmentalists talk about holistic, sustainable development of water resource management. The policy experts and the governance experts talked about the right models of implementation and governance of water resource, the water resource management projects in the country. The social activists, the legal experts talked about making water a right, how to ensure access to water in a legally justiciable way. And finally, of course, the political scientists also took interest in water studies and water related issues because ultimately it is all about who gets what, when and how. The most valued natural resource, the distribution of this most valued natural resource is also a political decision based on certain logic, certain concept of justice. So when water studies have become such a complex domain, its implementation requires a proper policy framework and Dr. Dipti Acharya's book is an effort to go into the complexities of policy making and policy implementation with respect to water resources in India. She has compared three different national water policies and has authored this book to come up with a comparative analysis of three national water policies. So I am very happy that Department of Political Science has been able to contribute something truly interdisciplinary in the field of research and I am sure this is just the beginning. Every author is left with this big question, what next now, once the book is published. So I am sure there are several other unanswered questions that book has thrown up, thrown up and definitely further projects, further researches on this particular important area would follow. So once again, let me welcome each one of you on behalf of the Atal Bihari Vajpayee Institute of Policy Research and International Studies as well as the Department of Political Science, Faculty of Arts. I am joined in welcoming you by Sri Sakti Sinha Ji, the Director of the Atal Bihari Vajpayee Institute of Policy Research and International Studies. 
who had all plans to come here. He had booked his tickets also for day before yesterday. Unfortunately, uh, some health related issues developed and he had to cancel his visit. But he also has conveyed his warm greetings to each one of you and also congratulations to Dr. Dikti Acharya. And most importantly, he was so regretful that he worked with Sri Navadavara during his civil service career and he was actually looking forward to join him on dais but unfortunately it did not take place. So, I also convey on behalf of Sri Shakti Sinnaji his greetings and his wishes for all of you. Thank you so much. Over to you, Aparna. Thank you so much, sir. Gratitude is something which we often find difficult to express. May I request the dignitaries to kindly accept a modest token of appreciation and gratitude from the organizing team for gracing this occasion with your formidable presence. I request Dean Professor Adya P. Saxena to present a sapling, our token, to our chief guest, Sri B. N. Navalavala, sir. I request Professor Dolakya to offer the memento and shawl to Sri Navalavala sir. to offer the token, a sapling, and the memento to our Dean Faculty of Arts, Professor Arthur Sassan. Professor Adya Saxena to kindly deliver the thematic address. Professor Saxena is a scholar of history from India with specialization in medieval South Asia. She has contributed to the field of urban and maritime studies immensely. She is a professor of history at the Department of History, the Maharaja Sajidaw University of Baroda, and has over 20 years of teaching and research experience. Currently, she is involved in archiving cataloging and preserving the vernacular manuscripts of the state finances of the Gaikwad state of Baroda, the Haribhaktis and Vikram Sarabhai being funded by Haribhakti, Raneshwar Trust and ISRO. Ma'am, please. Thank you, Aparna. Sadhana Ashma. I, on the behalf of the Maharaja Sahaya University of Baroda, Faculty of Art, welcome you, sir. And I have immense pleasure in congratulating a young scholar from my own faculty, whom I have seen as a student. I had an occasion to interact with her when I was a PG council member, and the title of the PhD thesis first appeared before me. Before I could lay hand on the book, I had an opportunity on the Shortunga portal to go through the thesis. And I must say that it is a wrong journey which comes in everybody's life, whether it is me or Professor Dolakya. Uh, talking about water, being a historian, I would make you travels in the ancient years, in the antiquity. If we start with Harappan culture, water management is there. But as this is a platform of policy research, political science, we cannot ignore what Indians are fishing. There, when a discussion is going on, conversation is going on in the people and the teacher, naturally water surfaces because water is life. If we don't drink water for three days, it becomes difficult to live and therefore water is a life. 
So water as a right has been spoken very well in our ancient scripture. Uh, I am a trained medieval scholar and here I would like to bring in some of the Persian sources. Because when we talk of pre-coloniality, which the Britishers are taking over and whatever they have left over, our policy makers have started from there. Why a ruler takes care of the water? Why a ruler thinks in terms that water is a right? Is it a right for the governance, the ruler, or is it the right for the consumer and the people of the land? And these are the issues which I think that becomes very pertinent when internationally we are trying to see whether water is a human right. Because the discourse has already started, because the present policy which is in vogue, and in fact, Dipti has talked in that on 2012, but we have to go into the yester years, and therefore I am bringing to your notice a wonderful uh, Persian text written by Rai Chaturman Saxena. These are, there are also a set of letters which are being actually addressed to the Mughal emperor, and these letters are basically emanating out of the resistance of the people within the Haryana territory. And I am talking about Isar Firoza because I have also involved myself doing research in water. So basically it was how the water management is taking place for irrigation purposes. And for irrigation purposes, water was needed. Today we are talking about um, the shifts for water or the shifts for people in terms of the availability of water, particularly, particularly potable water. So the people say if water will not come into the arid region, cultivation is not possible, revenue will not be paid and automatically excavation of the canals are taking place. But this canal irrigation is again having a bad history during the time of Sarov Chattabla or Yasujin Tugla who in fact want to raise the revenue. If water will not go, cultivation will not happen, rice will not be cultivated and rice that is coming from Haryana is basically the one which uh, gives us a higher price. Uh, if you uh, talk of Gujarat, the Daboi region, if you are moving from Daboi to Rajpipla, you will find a piece of land which is now water, a lake region, and people from Haryana during the medieval centuries were coming from there and rice cultivation had started. So water importance in the field of agriculture is important and in fact this relates the issue to the pattern. Uh, this is one issue and then the second issue which he is evaluating. Uh, the third issue comes the preservation, the traditional management which the current government in terms of uh, tangible heritage and intangible heritage is taking. So there are several issues which are coming and I was asked to give some thematic uh, uh, point of view. Uh, being the director of Center for Urban Studies, Waters in Asia is the thrust area. So the scholar, young scholars are there. So waters in Asia can become uh, an interesting thing for, uh, um, uh, say, um, barriers in terms of borders, barriers in terms of when we are talking about the infra and inter region, that is an also important issue. And to this is also one can relate the sanitation issue. So um, these are the issues that can be taken up by different departments of uh, the within the Faculty of Arts, and of course those scholars who actually indulge in interdisciplinarity. With these views, I thank one and all. Thank you on behalf of Faculty of Arts for inviting me, and congratulations to Dr. Deepthi Thank you. Water has been called the next oil. In the coming decades, the supply of water has the potential to influence geopolitics, diplomacy, and even conflict. It is about survival and sustenance with ecological integrity of not only humans, but also the entire race. This publication couldn't have come across at a better time than today. This book perhaps is the present and the future for all, uh, for all generations in order to bring out the myriad issues related to water and concerning humankind, ecology, and an integrity between the two. May I now request Sri B. N. Navalavala sir to initiate the process of the release of the book.
my immense pleasure and privilege to introduce such an illustrious dignitary that we have today as our chief guest for the evening, who has contributed immensely and rigorously not only towards not only really bureaucratically but also academically uh, in the country. I shall definitely take more than a minute to finish with this introduction because any introduction in few words of people such as these will always will never suffice. With an illustrious academic track record of a BE in civil engineering from Gujarat University, he joined government services through direct recruitment as an assistant engineer and continues to serve the country. Shri B. N. Navalavala Sir is currently the advisor to Honorable Chief Minister of Gujarat, Government of Gujarat, since the year 2007 to present, that is over 14 years. He assumed the uh, position of the member of Union Public Service Commission from the year 2002. He has been former Secretary, Ministry of Water Resources, Government of Gujarat from 2001 to 2002, and have continued to work as an advisor to the Ministry of Water Resources in the Planning Commission and have dealt with the overall planning, policy formulation, and allocation of financial resources. He has initiated and led many research projects related to water and have spoken and written extensively around these and related themes such as water governance, the Indian thematic related to water governance and policies, issues related to development in the context of extensive dam projects and its environmental implications for the world in general and India in particular. To be more specific, Sri Navalavala has published at international and national level uh, over 80 papers on crucial issues like interstate river water disputes, economics of irrigation projects, irrigation water pricing, irrigation management, water logging, rehabilitation and resettlement, participatory irrigation management, perspective planning for water resources development, hydropolitics, etc. He has worked as a member of a number of important national committees set up by the government of India for policy formulation, like the Committee of National Rehabilitation Policy, Committee on Interstate Basin Organizations, Committee on Pricing of Irrigation Water, etc. Besides, he has associated with the formulation and implementation of the World Bank Supported International Program for Technological Research in Irrigation and Drainage and, had, and have visited so many countries. Uh, he is the first Asian to have been the recipient of an award of excellence in recognition of his exceptional contribution to ICID and World Food Security from ICID in July 2002. He has traveled across the globe and has delivered academic talks, lectures, and critical commentaries around these information subjects. We request Sri B. N. Navalavala sir to deliver the First of all, I have to express my very sincere gratitude to the Atal Bihari Vajpayee Institute of Policy Research and International Studies as well as Department of Political Science, Anadha Sahaja University of Baroda, for inviting me to this August function. Indeed, they have given me a very 
wonderful opportunity to be among this galaxy of intellectuals and very tall personalities in their respective field. It's very heartening to see many my many of my good friends like Dr. Vijay Bhai and others. Now I was just listening very carefully to the thematic remarks as mentioned by Professor Adhyaji. She has been, in short, she has been telling us about the inevitability of water for the human existence. This takes me back to about 20 years. And it was the occasion when I took over as member of the Indian Public Service Commission. And that time, the Vijay Chief Minister was our present Prime Minister Narendra Gandhi. So I met him. He was knowing the civil service career. So after ex exchanging the pleasantries, he just told me his own words in Gujarati. So Bhavai, Pani Sate Tamara Saban Chalu that was the golden advice given to me by that. Then after many things happened, I served in the Indian Public Service Commission from where I started my civil service. And in fact, initially I was thinking to settle in Delhi, where I had spent about 20 years of my life. So now as I say, after meeting to Narendra Bhai and other things, I decided, or rather I revisited my that decision and decided to settle in Gujarat. He offered me to work for Gujarat and I accepted with gratitude that is how I have been working with the government of Gujarat. Now, we are all talking about as a water, but it is very general talk. In fact, if somebody wants to describe or if somebody wants to understand, the utmost usefulness of water, it can be said the water in its ordinariness is extraordinary. Although it appears to be very ordinary, but it is really extraordinary for all of us, for the human being, for the life. So when I got the, I received the invitation from Dr. Amitji. It was really a golden opportunity for me to deal with my subject of the passion. That is how I am here. So I am really thankful to Dr. Amitji and his team, all tolerance of the society in the field of education. Ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to congratulate Professor Dipti Acharya 
for authoring the book entitled Water and Public Policy in India, Policy, Rights and Governance, which is a very sensitive but critically important theme in the present times. Upon perusing the book, I find that the book is not only very rich in, in its contents, but also it painstakingly encompasses relevant facets of water as a scarce and precious national resource. Inevitability of water for our existence is known since thousands of years. But curiously enough, the importance of its judicious use has seldom been understood. With making water with uh, making water as the right, it is imperative to ensure accountability, transparency and avoidance of monopoly, discrimination and exploitation of water use. I am very sure that this book will prove to be of critical importance to scholars and researchers of public policy and law related to that. So once again I congratulate Professor Yipti Now Dr. Amitji has asked me to share my views or concerns about water and water. So I have picked up some a few of them which I would like to share with you in this our meeting. Today those wells which have been overflowing with water are in danger of running dry and along with the rest of the world we face a critical shortage of clean and fresh water. The common perception about availability of water is that of the abundance which is largely misconceived due to lack of mass education. Nearly 250 years ago, when the mankind population on earth was merely about 791 million, that is about 10% of the present population, one of the founding fathers in a polymath of the United States, Benjamin Franklin, had said, when the wells dry, we know the worth of them. Once you carry your own water, you will learn the value of each drop of With about 6% of the total geographical area of the country and about 5% of the total population as per census 2011, 2011. Gujarat possesses only 2% of the total surface water resources available to According to the latest estimates by the Gujarat State Education Department, the annual availability of the utilizable water resources in the state is about 55.61 billion cubic meter, out of which 38.10 billion cubic meter of water is surface water, while the rest of the water that is 17.1 billion cubic meter is available through ground. As the average per capita availability of water in Gujarat stands at around 920 cubic meter, being less than 1000 cubic meter, the state falls in the category of facing water scarcity as per the international norm. So Gujarat and this is a thing I have been telling uh, since the last so many years. If we should not as a leave under the illusion that Gujarat is a water surplus state. Even about a month ago, I had a discussion with the CM. That time also I told, that let us not be very complacent. The Gujarat not will not Gujarat will not face the water shortage. In fact, we are on the brink of the water shortage. Worldwide, 
water has become a subject of great contention. Struggles over or against water are no longer exclusively the domain of arid, semi-arid or dirt prone areas. They are found in virtually all parts of the world in some way or another, either because there is scarcity or floods or because of pollution or for several reasons at once. Water is also more and more becoming subject to intersectoral contention. It's a very important thing. And it is almost in every state, including Iran. Intersectoral use of the water. Like industries, urban households, agriculture, all demand more water than is available. Technological solutions have been offered, ranging from more intensive use and reuse to infrastructure for water transfer over ever farther distances and water extraction from ever deeper layers of the subsoil. Each solution solves some problems, but often creates as many new ones at the same time. India, with its large semi-arid areas, its huge urban agglomerations and their growing needs for industrial water use for a long time has been suffering greatly from water shortage and water pollution and the problems are only becoming clearer with the passage of time. The problems are the problems are not new and much has been written on the technological and management aspects of the water scarcity and much policy has been developed to address these problems. However, the legal issues involved and the wider social context in which these issues play a role have remained considerably underexposed. Allocation of allocation control and actual access to water are to a large extent regulated by legislation and other forms of government regulation. These legal rules legitimate control over water resources. Technological artifacts for the storage or transportation of water, over the intersectoral distribution of water, and over the actual use and exploitation of water resources. Struggles over water, therefore, often take the form of conflicts over the applicable legal rules. They are conducted and decided in terms of law. The administrative and court system then is to guarantee that such struggles are not determined through negotiations or fights that depend on the economic, political or even physical power of the contending parties, but according to the law which is presumed to embody the general will and the common interest of the people. And this, let me tell you, in this aspect I have, uh, I have gone through the very tough time because of this aspect of the war. When I was settled in the Lord of India, we had to deal with the Kaveri issue. It was a boiling issue. And I was away from Delhi. I got the call from the Prime Minister immediately to come back to Delhi. Because that time, Damin of Chief Minister was late Jai Rajati. Jai Rajati. And she was threatening to the stability of the with the you know, gravity of this situation. So these issues are, I say, very serious, not from the viewpoint of the society, but even from the political angles also. Same thing I say about the Yamuna River sharing between Haryana and Punjab. Is that as experiences in India and in and in many other countries show, if one intends to control or change water management practices. It is simply not sufficient to make a new law and expect people to behave accordingly. One of the reasons appears to be that what was called local customs and local traditions are more persistent than lawmakers hoped for. However, precisely how complex and tenacious these normative systems are and which role they actually play 
is not sufficiently clear. Similar remarks can be made for disputing over water and processes of conflict management. Sorry, processes of the conflict management. The courts in India handle numerous disputes over water, but their but their caseload seems to form only a tiny fraction of the vast amount of disputes and conflicts over water taking place. The majority of such disputes seem to be decided in quite different processes of conflict management by a large variety of institutions, ranging from village councils to the highest level of political and administrative organs of the state. Now, this is that. Okay, besides going as a, the common tool which is being used for such water dispute is setting up the tribunal. But I, uh, we all know the tribunal takes a lot of time, number one. Number two, it is not always guaranteed, I would say. And I am just uh, stating this or I am making this statement with all responsibility. Okay. There is no guarantee that the tribunal award will be implemented by all the parties states. There are instances where the tribunal notification or the order has not been modified because of the political decisions. Very little is known about the decision making processes and consequently which law or which mixture of legal rules and principles really are used in these processes. Moreover, the research raises the question of what should be seen as disputes over water rights and what not. So called water related cases can be framed in quite different ways as a straightforward dispute over rights to water, as a dispute over land, over inhabitants or as a civil case, a criminal case, constitutional or human rights case, whether one likes it or not. The non-official rules and procedures are factors which have to be taken into account, like right of way in case of land. So when I say some land piece is being used even without as a legal backing or legal as a standing. It becomes a right of way and it is always on. As it is, these factors are increasingly taken into account by the government, administration, and policy makers, as well as by NGOs that strive for a more equitable, sustainable, and efficient use of water. Another important aspect in the construction of water rights is the relationship of water and the physical and social environment of which it is part and of, and of rights pertaining to other elements of that environment. Land and water on or under it may be, con may be constructed as one of, as one comprehensive category of property area. Now it's a very complex and very, I would say, difficult issue. I am talking about the groundwater, it is coming back, it's a property land. Or rights of water, water may be derived from the right to land on which it is or vice versa. Now one of the main things is water lake or the problem which we encounter or we face uh, with regard to groundwater management, it is this property. The pro solutions are, they have been suggested. The Water under the land, beneath the land. It belongs to the landowner as per the existing law. But if the water, however, the, if the water is delinked from the land right, then this issue can be very easily managed. But at the same time, it will create turmoil in our know, society. Because you are making landowner without the right of water underneath. Which I think generally nobody will accept. It will be turmoil. From the case of irrigation water and drinking water, 
it is obvious that the land on which the water stands or along which it flows or where the water source is located is an integral part of people's construction of water rights. Because such rights may vary with the different relations of water to participate to particular plots of land and or technological artifacts, we will have to ask also questions like to what extent are water rights conceived of as isolates or related to rights pertaining to its environment or to wells and the land on which the wells are to reverse or regulate beds or to remain or shipping projects or of course irrigation canals, rears, division blocks, tubes, etc. There appears to be great variety in construction of water rights. Such differences in legal construction of water or land rights influence the ways in which conflicts are conceptualized and disputes are framed. There is a wide range of different types of rights to water, which embody sanction, social, economic, and political powers of different scope and intensity. Legal systems define these different types of rights and lay down the condition under which a social entity can or must become a right holder. These conditions may tie rights to a specific legal status such as being citizen or a member of a village community or an association like Water Users Association. They may also tie the acquisition and continuation of such rights to the fulfillment of the specific public interests. This is particularly so in most education systems where rights and participation in labor and monetary contributions to the maintenance and repairs of the system are intimately linked. The bundle of rights metaphor is a useful tool for analyzing the different elements summarized by such an umbrella concept. Looking at the total range of water rights in all societies, there is some differentiation between rights to control, regulate, supervise, represent in outside relations and regulate and allocate water on the one hand and rights to use and exploit it economically on the other. There is ample historical precedence for this. And Professor Adhyaji also spoke about it while referring to Chanakya. So even in 4000, even in 400 BC, Chanakya or Kautanya, in his world famous treatise, Artha Shastra, had mentioned about the amount of royalty to be collected for both surface water and ground water. So the water price is as a whole as 2,400. It's not a new thing, water pricing. It has been there. This shows that even though we had relevant information regarding water management during that period, in recent history we did not have any such elaborate laws or procedures related to utilization of the groundwater. And that is why groundwater, as of now, is largely, I would say, very loosely regulated, I would say, loosely regulated. There is no, I say, any full, uh, it is a full proof legal framework to manage the groundwater. The right to drinking water is part of the right to life and therefore, surely a natural right. And yet, thousands of villages have no source of safe drinking water. Water supply system exists in cities. But even there, it can hardly be said that the situation is satisfactory, particularly in the less affluent locations. What should we do to make this natural right real and real? It is also of interest to note that the courts in the USA have given decisions establishing water rights and priorities in numerous cases, including environmental rights in some. Now here I would like to place one as a ugly truth before this. 
enlightened audience. As we know, the Sardar Sarovar project is a, I would say, identity project for India. It's identity. The tribunal which was set up for deciding the sharing of the water among the Asian states, namely Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Uttara, took about 10 years. And finally, the, the Nagra Water District Tribunal gave its award in 1979. Unfortunately, at that time, there was no awakening or understanding about the environmental flow to be allowed or to be released in Nagra. So they decided the sharing of the total quantity of water available in the river among the three states and plus four states Rajasthan being outside the basin even though on the humanitarian ground that state was considered in this cell in sharing of the waters. But the point which I am trying to make here is that there was no, there is no provision in the tribunal award for the environmental flow. And this situation continued till 2005 when Gujarat approached to the Narada control okay. Because as a result of the no flow in the river, no flow in the river due to the concerns of the dam, the downstream area, downstream villages, towns or downstream ecology was very badly damaged. And Gujarat government approved to the NC. So provisionally, they approved 1,500 to set of water flow, that is environmental flow, which is very, very inadequate for a river like Narmada. Narmada usually is a river flow is something about 5 to 6 lakh to set, again, which 50 million to set is given. So that is what I am talking here. There was no such awakening or understanding in that time. Which the United States courts have now accepted. India's national water policy lays down some priorities too. But that is very rudimentary statement which needs to be elaborated and operationalized. However, that does, that does indeed it was rather far afield from federalism. The medium for national coordination and policy making in regard is the National Water Resource Council. The effectiveness of which needs to be strengthened, perhaps through some form of statutory method. Perhaps the National Water Policy could also be similarly provided with statutory method. In any case, Efforts should be made to make the policy operational. At the same time, it is necessary to promote the awareness that all forms of water, that is precipitation, soil moisture, surface water, and groundwater, form a part of one hydrological cycle. That intervention, even in a single state, single state river can have interstate consequences that water sort areas in the country have some right to expect accommodation from water surface areas and that water is in fact a national resource. Here before I conclude, I would just as a merit one and add one. As I told uh, our late, uh, our Prime Minister late Bajpaisa, he was very keen for the interlinking of river project and personally he had discussion with me one to one and expressed his desire he just told me rather than the instrumentalize ordering as the prime minister he urged me to why don't you try and do four or three interstate projects that we can showcase to the nation and the ministry being in the ministry, we all tried our level best, including visiting the 
कंसर्न स्टेट्स लाइक बिहार केरला पंजाब टू मेक देम टू अंडरस्टैंड द वाटर द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ वाटर इज ऑलवेज इज इन इक्वल इट इज नॉट एज इक्वल सम स्टेट्स हैव वॉट सरप्लस वाटर सम स्टेट्स हैव वाटर स्केल लाइक गुजरात it doesn't mean that the state which has got very uh, less water resource so suffer it's a natural resource but you will be surprised to know the response which i got is state like they are undivided they are that time they refuse to agree for sparing their surplus state surplus water not withstanding the fact that bihar is bihar is passing through every year the fury of the floods even then they refuse you know we don't have surplus water same thing there are they did so here as we need to develop a national perspective okay water is a national resource it's not simply that that is like punjab or haryana but i think time will take care So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much, sir, for that wonderful talk. May I now request? May I now invite Dr. Deepthi Acharya? Senior Assistant Professor, Political Scientist and Researcher, Department of Political Science, the Maharaja Sahaj Ram University of Baroda, to share some of her reflections and experiences through this process of coming up with this book. She has been a political scientist and researcher for many years and has many publications to her credit, apart from the most recent one. Her research interests include public policy analysis, public administration. development administration comparative politics and state politics in india some of her papers and publications surrounding the current theme include children's rights a discussion in the context of right to water water public versus private does right to life also mean right to water the question of water management in india arguing water as a right a critical analysis of water literature advanced in political discourses water a subject of life or a resource for profit and the like she is credited to have contributed to con to curriculum development of many academic institutions and has delved into an intense research in this area which also was her doctoral thesis may i welcome you Thank you, Aparna. Thank you so much for this kind uh, introduction. Um, a very good afternoon to all of you, and a very warm welcome to B. M. Narawala sir. It's indeed a big, big thing for me, uh, for you to join me and all of us on this book launch because your presence itself is saying many things because. uh when apana was introducing so uh you must be uh, you you got something that what sir is is all about and how keen he is about the water issues uh so thank you so much sir for coming here it means a lot to me it means a lot to me really thank you sir um before starting i would like to uh, give my thanks to my dean adhya madam adhya sana madam thank you for coming here Uh, thank you, Niti Ma'am. Thank you, Parma Sir. Thank you so much, uh, my friends, my colleagues, and my very dear students for coming and joining me on this event. Uh, I think that uh, since so many days, I was thinking that when the day will come, finally, what I will talk about. Um, and then I thought that I cannot start without thanking Professor Amit Tholakia. And I know after this. After this, uh, he is going to be very angry with me because he doesn't like appreciation at all, and he is different in that sense. But uh, uh, I really uh, 
I have thanked him many times, many times. And uh, whenever I am thanking him, I am thinking that there must be some other words to uh, say thanks, you know. Because thanks is not enough, I think. It's not enough for a person like him. And uh, I just wish that every junior like me should have a senior like him. And I mean that. I mean it. Since my joining 2006 until date when I am standing here, this is his trust on me. Uh, which is making this book the book it is. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you for giving me uh, this opportunity. And I would like to say my many thanks to my family, my medical family, my mamas, my masis, mommies, my mummy, who is sitting here with all the difficulties. And uh, trust me, whatever I am today, it is because of her and her efforts that has made me like this. So thank you ma for being like that and uh, there is no thanks for her but really thank you. Um, about this book I think I can say many 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 things because uh, when it comes to water, when it comes to uh, a person who is uh, so much keen to talk about water and then he, that person is writing the book as well. So for me, I can talk many things endlessly and trust me, I can talk so much that you will not even realize that, okay, this is the morning and this is not the 13th of September, but, but the next month has come, that is the 1st of, of October. So, but I will try to limit myself and certainly when uh, you are writing a book, uh, you are evolving with the book, many things are evolving. You are evolving with the experiences, with your readings, with some backgrounds, with some analysis, with some interpretations. And then you are reaching to some book. If if and and if the subject is is like water, and I'm really thankful to Ajay Madam and uh, Navrawala ji because uh, Sir has also thrown the light of the significance of water when it comes to the uh, comes to the political discussions or the historical discussions. About the title of the book, uh, many people have asked me that uh, why the title is like that. And I think that that is the most interesting part of it and I would like to discuss about uh, a bit about that why the title of the book is Water and Public Policy in India and Politics, Rights and Governance. If you will look at the title itself, it is talking about multiple things and each of it is it's, it's, it's a very heavy terminology when if, if you will try to look at with the political discourses. Like right itself, oh my god, it's a huge thing. Politics, oh my god, everywhere and you can't deny to it. The governance, which is, uh, which is you can't ignore when it comes to, uh, to, to political discourses, policy discourses or even the philosophical discourses. So, uh, one can ask me a question that are you talking about all this? Are you talking about, can you dare uh, to talk about all these things in just 200 and some, uh, I don't know, I have not uh, counted, but it seems that 262 pages. But ask me just to write this 262 pages, my all years turned white. So, I am very thankful to Adhya Madam when she pointed me as a young scholar. So thank you so much, madam, because the work uh, which uh, I was trying to do has uh, has made me uh, older and older, and I'm happy that I'm older now in this sense. The book is talking about, if you will look at, it is talking about the politics of MBQT. And the MBQT is about the use of terms, what are you using? And when I was looking at Sir's slides very carefully, I have noticed that even Sir has used the term water rights. Uh, in political discourses, and if you will look at the, some of the Western scholars, including the Ramaswamy Ayer, the most uh, renowned scholar in water, and because of his initiative, the first water policy came in, in 1987, uh, at the tenure of Rajiv Gandhi, Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. So he was very, uh, very peculiar about using the terms that you should not use 
water rights because it is the it is uh, when you are using the term like water rights it is you are giving priority to economic use and the developmental use of water so when i am talking about uh, politics in this book i am mainly talking about the ambiguity and talking about the uh, the politics of privatization i am talking about the politics of ignorance the politics of victimhood which is not been realized you are a victim of what i have not and you don't know that you are a victim of so the book initially is talking about it is trying to create the background of politics then it is talking about the rights and in this extensively it is talking about that how the uh, west modern political thought is talking about water and when the people are arguing the scholars are arguing about water to be considered as right then why it is, is, it is required to be and how it is supposed to be. When it comes to the government, you can see that the three policies are in focus and I think that the, uh, the biggest, uh, if I can say as an author, uh, the biggest contribution of this book is that it is, it is trying to introduce a new framework which I have given a name, uh, I have given a name of um, you know, water policy analysis framework and this is introducing some principles, 12 principles and it is an attempt to, with the use of this framework you can analyze any of the policy in the direction of rights. So I think that the title justifies uh, the content which is I think it's, it's very important when you are writing something for, for, the, for the government, for the individuals, for the researchers for the environmentalists and for the uh, most dangerous civil, civil societies. Uh, why this book is another very important question, I think, and many of you must be very keen to know about it because uh, when I started my, my journey to work on that, what should I do? Because maximum of us are confused about that. What should we do and what we should talk about? In this why I can give you thousands and thousands of reasons but few I will talk about because I, I value your time uh, the first very first reason you can see uh, you can see that as as an idea this this book was in me in my, in, in my childhood because I am from a region uh, which has which has which is facing a problem of water scarcity water stress and those who are having some connection of uh, with Rajasthan, they must be aware about the nature of problem that what type of nature it, it is not just the scarcity. I think engineers are doing very well about it. That how it can make it uh, available, how it can be reachable to all. But the problem is something else, and the book is talking about it. When I uh, I saw my family struggling for water day to day when I saw my neighbors, when I, sir has used a very good term when you are failed in negotiations and trust me, the negotiations are not at the level of governments, but at the level of the neighbors as well. Okay, you have given, allowed me to have two extra uh, water water buckets, so tomorrow I will even allow you. So you will have good relations as per the, you, you can have a good relation in water queues, nowhere else you can. If those who have some experience about the Rajasthan, they can, they can uh, certainly agree with me. First reason was this, that I was very disturbed and that disturbance was there in me. And when I came here um, uh, to join MS University, I, it was there in me and I feel that something is required to be done. But as a researcher, what can you do except doing the research? And therefore, when I started with it, um, there were many doubts about that what you will do and uh, my first guide was obviously Professor Anito and when I went to him uh, I remember that he said that it's a good idea but what you will do because you know who can say that water is not a right it is a right and he was very right that water is a right you can you cannot deny it but then the, what, what, what it is which is disturbing it and the book is all about it and that's the reason why this book is there in front of you. The another reason is, is the politics of privatization, which I have not touched much in this book because 
I think there are many scholars like Karen Baker, Vanna Astana, Vanna Shiva also. These people have done tremendously about it. And therefore, I, I thought that let's talk about something else and not because there is no meaning of producing something which is already there. It's not new. You have to do something new if you are doing a research. It is supposed to be a contribution in true sense. And therefore, this book is there in front of you. The another reason to have this book was uh, when, when I looked at India, uh, the, the, the pattern of governance, the strategies, when I looked at the government with the legal perspectives, when I looked at, the, at, at India with the, with the judicial frameworks, it was very surprising to know that it's the judiciary which is taking care of, care of your interest regarding the water. And it is very clear and the book is extensively talking about that how the judiciary has contributed uh, in the journey of right to water, which I am constantly arguing in this book that right to water is not human right to water because human right to water is celebrated, must maybe celebrated and it is celebrated by international organizations like World Bank or United Nations, but it is actually very dangerous for those reasons that are suffering from water stress. So the whole world, if you will look at, there, there is a clear divide of water has and water have nots. And I was very keen that how this politics of terminology is being used by the scholars, when it is being said by United Nations that we will provide you human right to water, you are allowing you to some of the powerful states to intervene in your in in, in your uh, in, in regulating the water resources, which is very good and which will lead to privatization. And privatization is, I, I'm, I'm having some reservation because it cannot give justice. It can give efficiency, but it cannot give justice. So the question was constant in my mind that what about water justice? And therefore the book is there in front of you. The another reason that why this book I thought to write is that, uh, because I am a student of uh, policy sciences as well, and I have noticed that in India, uh, policies are not taken much seriously because uh, maybe they are not as sound and solid as laws are. And therefore, maybe the policies are not taken very seriously, lightly, and uh, it is assumed, and, you, uh, and, and I mentioned also in the book that uh, it shall be everywhere the policy, the language of the policy, it shall be done. But who will who will do it? You are the government and you are while writing a document like policy. It shall be done. You have to write, it will be done. You have to give a promise. So the policy is a policy, uh, uh, it's a promise document. The, the content of it is supposed to be a promise. And therefore I thought that I should write, uh, I, I should do my research in the context of the policies. When I started with it, and when the interaction was there with Amit sir, uh, I'm sorry because he was the only source of my discussion. Uh, so I'm sorry sir, I, again and again you will be angry but I have to tell you. Good. So again and again whenever I was meeting to him, I remember my first meeting uh, with him and trust me I wrote two chapters, 80, 80 pages each chapter and I wrote it by, I typed it by my own and that has gifted me gold for Zalgo in my right, right hand. And when I went to him, he scrolled his computer screen and he said, wonderful, but where is right to water? And then you can imagine a condition of a person who has nothing in the hand and if, if the guy is saying, where is it? And I was very upset on that day, sir that you are very rude to me because I wrote two chapters and still you are saying where is right to water. But he was right like always and then I tried to explore that uh, what they actually and then I found it is not there. I have to interpret it and therefore in the beginning I said that when you are writing something uh, you are interpreting many things and therefore the danger is always there of interpretation. So I cannot interpret anything which is not existing. I cannot interpret right now that the room is very dark. I can't do like that because there is full, 
full supply of electricity. I can't do. I I will be. I will prove wrong, which is and therefore the burden was very heavy on me. Uh, with this discussions with him, I remember that was the first rejection from his side. And then suddenly he must have some. He must have changed his mind, and he said, "Next, whenever I want to, uh, I went to him. He said, 'Okay, fine. It's a good. It's good. It's fine.'" And when I went to him with my last chapter, he looked at it and he said, "Dipti, this is not for Indian audience." And trust me, that was the day, uh, best day for me because if a person like him is saying that this is for international audience, means a lot to me. And I think that उस दिन कुछ सरस्वती बैठे थे उनके 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 मुंह में and therefore the book is uh, published by international uh, publisher like Taylor and Francis. I was not sure about the book uh, once when I have done with it. Multiple times we were sitting together. Um, I am sure that sir was very serious when he was saying कि हाँ वो this is going to be published by international um, publisher and. I would like to mention here Akash Chakrabarti, who is the senior commissioner at Routledge, and he is operating from Delhi. Uh, I I I met many people, but he is uh, he is a different man, a man with um, he is not sitting here, therefore I can say so. Uh, he is uh, amazing in his understanding, and when I I I write to me small just. Few lines in the mail that I have done like this, and I would like to present uh, this book for your consideration. And immediately, um, within half an hour, he replied to me that please uh, send your manuscript. I sent to him, and then a uh, few months means I have to wait almost for one year to get this, and then this no, not like this, not but this, but not this, but like that. And the pain and 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 trust me, uh, there was a time when I was thinking that I should give up because I can't do that type of hard work that Routledge was expecting from me to do. It was beyond my capacity. But I think it was it was Akash and Bindra. Bindra, she is operating from London office, and because these two people were just behind me, that no, you will be. Uh, this is something a good book, a real contribution, and uh, trust me when she said to I thought that maybe they will publish it in South Asia, uh, you know. Uh, but when the people informed me because I was very keen to know me and the book about that, and then the people informed me that the thing first it will come to London and America, and then it will come to India. <laughs> and. Uh, That I was very surprised of because I am talking about India's water policies and they are saying it will first go to America or London. And then I asked, "Ki bhai ye log padenge wahan pe?" Because this is something about India. Why? Why people from London will will read something about India? But uh, I really very amazed about the confidence of 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 Routledge on me, and therefore I am very thankful to Akash. And to Bindra, both of them are not here, but but certainly uh, I'm really very very grateful to them. Uh, about this book, and this is the last few things I would like to share with you, uh, is that uh, I know the book is uh, very academic by its nature, but I think uh, if if uh, if a student, because I am a teacher, so. I I can't just write for the government, and this is for the government as well because the book is in in the last talk, last chapter of it. That is the conclusion of of my book is trying to give some suggestions. Although uh, I'm not a civil servant, but as a researcher, as a student of policy sciences, I thought it's my duty if I have done some uh, some some uh, some readings, if I have experienced something. I should certainly try to request to the government because you can only request to the government, sir. You can't say anything else to them. So uh, I thought to give some suggestions, but I think the book is more about the students as well because uh, how to interpret. One of my students has asked me this question in the class. 
that madam how to conceptualize something and the most uh, difficult prayer i think that this is the most difficult prayer for for the for the students of policy sciences or political sciences because everything is done by karl marx or hobbes or by cotillia or they have they have not, uh, they have not left anything for us so you have to reinterpret something in in the present context and therefore in the book uh, i have decided to talk only about the modern political uh, thinkers and not about cotillia because then i have to talk a lot about and therefore there, there is a description so i think the book a uh, book is 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 a way it it will open your mind if you will read two times but let me uh, because the book is not very simple uh, 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 not simple in the sense that it is you, when you will read it you will feel ki ye to pata hai you know? but this pata hai as sir said very rightly that water is something which is very common but it is very uncommon and the same is about the book it is very common everybody knows about it but if i will tell you for for now that you have to write for uh, about 500 words that what it is a right you will not able to write and this is not our limitation but the problem is that we have taken this issue so light if i will say that write on internet write a page you will write 10 pages on it but when it comes to write to water it is very difficult maybe because it is not being taught in india this book i think will try to um, and this as a author i think because every author is trying to celebrate each and every line of 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 his or her book and maybe i'm trying to celebrate it so sorry if if you feel like that but certainly i i really feel that the book is actually pointing to the problem what the problem is and if you will look at just one paragraph of it is talking about the water scarcity and the level of availability of water in, in india or in global entire book is not a cry of water scarcity because i feel that instead of crying on on the scarcity or abundance you have to look at how to solve it as sir said right in the beginning amit sir said uh, who gets what when and how and the book is talking about who is got who is getting what of when and how and when trying to answer this question it is trying to elaborate uh, the issues which are coming to consider what as a right how government is dealing it uh, when it comes to the laws or, or planning frameworks how uh, uh, judiciary is playing a role how the civil society is playing a role and how uh, the water policies are dealing with the issue of of water policies in india with this i would like to conclude my my talk i can't talk much today because i know since very long you all are sitting uh, i am planning to have some more events not maybe not in the same uh, venue or same university but i have decided that uh, at least for 5 months i will talk about the books and uh, rawpage has given next project to me i will start on that project so with this i would like to thank you all your presence means really a, a, a lot to me thank you so much for coming to celebrate this book not because the book is written by dipti but the 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 type of work that has come up uh because of the blessings of my friends who were constantly behind me like nidhi uh shandulika ami is there bhumi apana fiona pradeep uh tanmay sham sundar there are many darshni also i can see in the audience so all these friends neeti ma'am despite of uh, so british you she is is here with me and ma'am means a lot to me thank you so much and thank you all thank you for coming thank you thank you apna over to you thank you ma'am for that heartening talk
May I now request Shri Umang Murthy, Assistant Professor of Law, Faculty of Law and Coordinator, Institute of Leadership and Governance, and Kushal Rao, Student, Institute of Leadership and Governance, to present a copy of the book Minor Hints, authored by Raja Sarti Madhav Rao. It's a compilation of lectures delivered to the Maharaja Sarti Rao Gaikwad uh, May I request both of you to come onto the stage and present a copy of this to our chief guest, Sri Vyan Navalavala sir. Thank you.